In this tutorial, we're going to look at the basics of surface modeling in Rhino. And the first thing we're going to look at is modeling using the plane. And we can go up to the main menu under surface, and we're going to go through some of these basic types of surface modeling. And these are our options for creating a plane. Now, let's take a look at the toolbar for plane. If we go to tools, toolbar layout, we can browse through this window and look down under P for plane. And we can close this. So this is just a graphic representation. Makes it a little easier of how we can use the plane. So we can use a corner to corner. And again, I've set up these squares to be 10 feet by 10 feet. So turn my grid snap on. I can make this 10 by 20. We can use a rectangular pl plane, three points. So this you draw an edge, whether it's a vertical edge, we'll try that again, or a horizontal edge. We can draw a vertical plane. It will draw it in the Z axis. So let's try that. We can fit a plane through points. Now, one thing that's important about the plane is it's always going to be a rectangle or a square. It's not it's not going to be organic geometry as you can see from this picture. So if I right click on the points button and I make a series of points and I use the fit plane through points I'm just going to select these points press enter we get a, in this case, we get a square plane. We can um, make a cutting plane, which is a plane that is perpendicular to the construction plane. So if I click on cutting plane and I select the object, start of cutting plane. So where, where are we going to put it? We'll put one, say, right here. Hit escape. How does that look on one of my flat planes? Okay, so it, it basically makes it symmetrical about an object and it has some default settings on how far it extends in all directions. I can select all these objects and type in hide. Okay, let's keep going here. And the next type of surface that we're going to make is a loft. Okay, so let's what we need for loft is we need at least two curves. So let's go ahead and draw a curve. So that's a curve in the XY. Let's draw a curve in the XZ plane. So to do this, I'm going to bring out the toolbar for the construction planes, just so we get a better visual. So if I go to Tools, Toolbar Layout, and I go down to Set C Plane, so that will be a front, a world front. Okay, and now I can draw 
a control point curve, so a three-dimensional curve. And if I use my loft command, so let's also bring out the toolbar for surfaces. Okay. So here is our loft. Select curve, curves to loft. Press enter. We can reverse the order. If I click on align curves. Okay. Press enter. Click OK. So it aligned the beginning of the curve and the end of the curve, and it created a surface between those. And if I shade that, okay, so that's that's what we can do with those two curves using the loft. So let's just move this out of the way for now so that we have our curves beyond. Okay, I still have my two curves. And we can use these two curves to look at other types of surface modeling. So the next type that we're going to look at is a sweep one rail. And our rail will be the plan, the curve that's in plan. And what we're going to sweep along that rail is our three-dimensional curve. So I'll click on sweep one rail, pick my rail. Rhino is looking for the cross section, pick my cross section, and hit enter. Now, my sweep rail options is set up from the last time I did this, which is rebuild with 10 control points. So if I click on Do Not Simplify, which is typically, typically the default, and click on Preview, this is what you have. Now, my reasoning for rebuilding with 10 control points is so that I can break this nerve surface down in both the V direction, the vertical direction, which it's already doing, and the horizontal direction, so that when we get to doing generative component modeling we've subdivided this surface so I can click on rebuild with 10 control points and click preview and I'll click OK so that is creating a surface using a sweep one rail let's let's move these down And let's add a second rail. So I'm going to set my seaplane back to world top. And I'm going to draw another curve coming off the top of this vertical curve. Now, it's important that I have planar on. Otherwise, it will snap to the top of this line and it will start to draw on the construction plane. So I want to draw a planar curve from the top of this 3D curve. So I'm going to click on control point curve and I'm going to start to draw okay so now I have two rails two rails and a section curve. So I'm going to choose my sweep two rails, select first rail, select second rail, select cross-section curves. Press enter. Now it remembers my rebuild with 10 control points and I'm going to keep that on and I'm going to click OK. Okay, the next kind of surface that we're going to create is we're going to create a revolve surface. And let's move these surfaces down so to revolve we need a 
curve to revolve, which we'll use this one that we've been using. And then we need an axis for that curve to revolve around. So that axis in our case is going to be a vertical. We're going to use the world Z axis. So I'm going to switch my C plane to world front. And I'm going to choose revolve select curve to revolve enter start of revolve axis now it doesn't have to be right on the curve and I'll demonstrate I'll choose this point out here I'll make it a vertical axis then Rhino wants me to define where that revolve starts and ends it doesn't have to start and end at that section curve and just to show that I'll do it out here Okay, so that's using our revolve, and we can do that one more time. This time, let's create our start of revolve axis at the beginning of the curve, and start angle, we'll do a 360 degree this time. Start angle is zero, so I can just press enter and then my revolution I can say full circle so you can do it graphically as we did first or graphically or visually on the screen or you can type in the start and end angle okay let's uh, let's move these down okay the last type of surface modeling we're gonna take a look at is using the rail revolve. Okay, so I'm going to set up some geometry to do this. So I'm going to take all these and move them down. I'm going to set my C plane back to world top. And I'm going to create using the polygon a 10 sided star. So I'm going to change it to star and the number of sides I'm going to change to 10. I'll, I'll pick the center of the star. Make the radius of this star, let's say, go 100 feet. Okay. something like that and what I want to do is I want to radius all of the edges I'm gonna type in the command fillet and I'm gonna choose fillet corners I'm gonna select my star polyline enter my fillet radius is going to be 10 feet and it fillets all of those corners so that is going to be my rail, since we're talking about a rail revolve. And the, the axis will, will be the center of that polygon, but I need a section curve. Okay, so I'm going to draw in 3D. So I'm going to change my C plane to world front. And I'm going to draw a section curve. Let's think of this as the roof of a dynamic building I'm gonna use a control point curve I'll come off the center okay let's use we'll right click on this revolve button which gives us a rail revolve select profile curve that's going to be the section. Select rail curve, our 10 sided star. Start of rail revolve axis. We'll go right down the center here. And use my shift key and just drag all the way up. And there we are. So that's it for.
basic surface modeling in Rhino.